In today's episode, we embark on a journey into the rhythmic landscape of a track that has not only resonated with me, but has left an indelible mark on the hearts of many. This isn't just a song, it's a narrative, a sonic odyssey that delves into the very core of the artist's soul. Join me as we unravel the layers of Home by Ricky Rick, a composition that transcends musical boundaries and strikes a chord with its poignant lyrics and evocative melodies. The reason for featuring this track lies in its ability to transport listeners to a realm of emotions and experiences. Home isn't merely a sequence of notes and beats, but a living, breathing entity that captures the essence of Ricky's artistic expression. It's an invitation to explore the nuances of life, love, and the myriad emotions that define the concept of home. As we delve into the intricacies of this composition, we'll dissect the lyrics, decipher the musical arrangement, and uncover the inspirations that breathe life into the song. This episode is an exploration of artistry, a celebration of creativity, and an opportunity to connect with the universal language of music. So, whether you're a longtime fan of Ricky, or just discovering the magic of home for the first time, join me on this auditory adventure. Let the melodies guide you, the lyrics resonate with you, and the stories within the song become a part of your own narrative. Stay tuned as we immerse ourselves in the evocative world of Home by Ricky Rick. The haunting melody of Home acts as an ethereal prelude, drawing listeners into a realm of introspection and vulnerability. This sonic journey, released on October 3, 2020, reveals a paradoxical exploration of success weighed against the haunting specter of memories. As Ricky, alongside Mass Music, plunges into the depths of his emotions, the lyrics resonate with the highs and lows of his personal and artistic odyssey. The song takes on an eerie resonance considering the tragic events that unfolded just over two years later. In February 2022, Ricky, the maestro behind this poignant composition, took his own life, casting an even darker shadow over the already emotionally charged lyrics. The juxtaposition of success and the contemplation of an alternate existence intricately shape the narrative, creating an emotional landscape that becomes profoundly poignant in the wake of his untimely demise. As we dissect the verses and unravel the musical intricacies, we navigate not only the artistic genius that Ricky brought to the forefront, but also the internal struggles that found a haunting echo in his lyrical expressions. Join me in this exploration of a song that now stands as a testament to the complexities of the human experience and the enduring impact of an artist whose voice continues to resonate, even beyond the boundaries of life. The rich tapestry of home extends beyond its haunting melody and introspective lyrics. A key element lies in its sampling of As Yet Untitled by Terence Trent Darby, now known as Sananda Maitreya. This connection adds layers of complexity to the narrative, intertwining the stories of two artists who have used their craft to navigate the tumultuous seas of life. As Yet Untitled serves as a foundational piece, echoing themes of struggle, resilience, and the perpetual quest for self-identity. Within its verses, a desolate and impoverished landscape unfolds, painting a vivid picture of a speaker thrust into a realm far from prosperity and nurturing environments. This theme resonates profoundly with home, creating a seamless thread that binds the two songs together. In both musical compositions, moments of struggle become palpable, the artists, each in their unique way, use their voices to reflect on the challenges encountered on their respective journeys. Home becomes a poignant chapter in this broader narrative, continuing the conversation initiated by As Yet Untitled. It's a testament to the universality of human experience, where the echoes of adversity and the search for identity resonate across genres and generations. As we delve into the intricate connections between both songs, Let's explore how the harmonious interplay of these two songs adds depth to the narratives woven by Ricky and Sananda Maitreya. Together, they invite us to reflect on the shared human experience of grappling with hardship, finding resilience, and seeking the elusive essence of self amidst the challenges of life's journey. In the sonic realm, where melodies transcend time, the evocative prelude emerges, a melodic invocation echoing through the corridors of musical history. These ethereal notes, a mere glimpse into the symphony of possibilities, pave the way for a journey that transcends genres and generations. As we embark on this exploration, the haunting echoes of the past intertwine with the present, setting the stage for a harmonious convergence. The poignant phrase, six million ways to die, choose one, resonates like a solemn whisper, echoing through the corridors of the song. 
In these words, a profound reflection on the intricate tapestry of life unfolds, a contemplation of the myriad paths, each laden with its own challenges and choices. This somber tone invites us to introspect, acknowledging the inherent hardships and complexities that accompany our journey. The metaphorical weight behind six million ways to die encapsulates the multitude of struggles, adversities, and pivotal decisions that shape our existence. It's an acknowledgement of life's fragility and the delicate balance we navigate with each choice. As we stand at the crossroads of these lyrical musings, the phrase serves as a poignant reminder that our journey is defined by the choices we make. It carries a certain gravity, urging us to approach life's myriad possibilities with a mindful awareness of the impact each decision may hold. In the haunting intro just before the chorus, Ricky's voice echoes a sentiment that transcends the realm of music, a proclamation that pierces the soul. This land is still my home, carries an eerie weight, especially when we consider the tragic turn of events that unfolded in the early hours of February 23, 2022. These words, initially an artistic expression in the context of the song, took on a chilling reality when they resurfaced in Ricky's tweet. A stark reminder that sometimes, the lines between an artist's creation and their lived experience blur, leaving us with a haunting premonition encapsulated in lyrical verses. As we approach the chorus, these words linger in the air, casting a somber shadow over the melodic landscape. The impact of this brief yet powerful utterance is a testament to the profound connection between an artist's work and their personal journey. In the soulful chorus, Sananda Maitreya paints a vivid picture of desolation, evoking a landscape marred by hardship and struggle. The imagery crafted through his lyrics transcends mere words, immersing us in a world where the dust hangs high, far from the nurturing embrace of a riverbank. Out by a shanty where the dust hangs high, far from a river where things grow green, the poetic juxtaposition of these lines captures the stark contrast between barrenness and fertility between a place of lack and one teeming with life. The choice of words creates a sensory experience, allowing us to feel the weight of the desolate surroundings. As the narrative unfolds, Sananda introduces the haunting image of weeping flowers leaning away from the blood-stained soil beneath his feet. Here, the flowers become poignant symbols of resilience, bending away from the harsh reality beneath them. The blood-stained soil hints at a history of struggle, a narrative of pain etched into the very earth. In the context of home, these themes of struggle, resilience, and the quest for identity find a powerful parallel. Both songs become intertwined in their portrayal of the human experience, navigating the complexities of life's challenges and the indomitable spirit that persists against all odds. In the opening verse, Ricky delves into the depths of his psyche, laying bare the weight of external pressures and the toll they take on his mental and emotional well-being. The lyrics become a poignant prelude to the tragedy that would later unfold, offering a glimpse into the internal struggles he faced. All this pressure gonna be the death of me, Ricky's words resonate with a haunting clarity, foreshadowing the overwhelming burden he felt. The juxtaposition of pressure and death speaks volumes about the suffocating nature of expectations and the impact they can have on an individual's sense of self. Fake love, killing my energy, Ricky confronts the corrosive effects of insincere affection highlighting the draining consequence of navigating a world where authenticity is often elusive. His vulnerability surfaces as he grapples with the weight of memories, offering a glimpse into the internal conflicts that often accompany fame. The pouring of liquor for all my enemies becomes a ritualistic homage to the challenges faced, a recognition of the battles fought against unseen adversaries. The subsequent tribute to all my dead homies adds a layer of solemnity, Acknowledging the toll that life's struggles can take on personal relationships. I pray I meet you at the crossroad. Sooner or later, only God knows. Ricky's contemplation of a meeting at life's crossroads takes on a haunting significance in the aftermath of his passing. The uncertainty of life's journey, encapsulated in the phrase, only God knows, echoes with an eerie resonance. In these lines, Ricky unveils a profound dichotomy, encapsulating the journey from the joyous beginnings of his rap career to the complexities that success introduces. The evolution from rapping for fun to a state where it becomes fruitful reflects the transformation of his passion into a lucrative endeavor. I was rapping for fun, but now it's fruitful, embodies the initial purity of his engagement with music. 
the essence of enjoyment and creativity that marked his entry into the world of rap contrasts with the more complex reality of a flourishing career. The term fruitful denotes the tangible success, the literal fruits born out of his labor, as his artistry gained recognition and financial reward. But fruitful, also come with brutal, serves as a stark acknowledgement of the harsh realities that accompany success. The clever play on words adds a layer of irony and depth to the narrative. Fruitful and brutal not only refer to the prosperity and hardship, but also cleverly allude to brutal fruit, an alcoholic beverage. This dual entendre introduces a subtle yet impactful metaphor, suggesting that the sweet fruits of success come intertwined with the bitterness of its challenges and complexities. These lines offer a poignant reflection on the dual nature of success, an endeavor that, while bringing forth the sweetness of achievement, also exposes artists to the bitter challenges and pressures that come with the spotlight. In the pre-chorus, Ricky unveils a profound glimpse into the inner turmoil that characterizes his emotional landscape. The lines, Sometimes I feel like I want to leave it. If I leave, then who are they going to believe in? How are they going to receive it? Or do they even need it? Resonate with a complex mixture of vulnerability, self-doubt, and a yearning for understanding. The ambiguity surrounding the term leave introduces a multifaceted interpretation, leaving room for speculation. Leave could be construed as contemplating suicide or death, a somber reflection on the weight of existence. Alternatively, it might signify a desire to step back from the spotlight, a contemplation of retirement or withdrawal from the public eye. This ambiguity adds depth to the emotional landscape painted by Ricky, inviting listeners to grapple with the complexity of his emotions. The phrase, who they gonna believe in, delves into his perception of his role and impact on others. It suggests a deep sense of responsibility, a concern for the belief and trust that others have vested in him. The identity of they remains open to interpretation. It could encompass fans who look up to him, family members who rely on him, or friends who draw inspiration from his journey. How they gonna receive it? Probes the potential aftermath of his departure, emphasizing the uncertainty that shrouds such a decision. He contemplates the ripple effect, questioning how his absence would be perceived by those who have invested their belief in him. This line unveils the intricate dynamics between an artist and their audience, highlighting the impact of their decisions on the collective perception. The poignant inquiry, or do they even need it, injects a dose of introspection. It reflects a genuine pondering of his significance in the lives of others. Ricky grapples with the fundamental question of whether his presence and contributions hold genuine value, a question that transcends the realms of artistic expression and delves into the core of human connection. In the second chorus in, the raw and haunting vocals carry a weighty revelation. The lines, I tried to bend my knees, but my knees were already bent, paint a vivid picture of struggle and exhaustion. The act of bending the knees, often symbolic of humility or submission, becomes an arduous task, emphasizing the challenges and weariness experienced by the speaker. The confession, I haven't stood like a man for such a long time now, unveils a profound sense of vulnerability and self-reflection. Sananda grapples with a prolonged period of feeling diminished, stripped of the strength and resilience traditionally associated with standing tall. This admission serves as a poignant reminder of the fragility inherent in the human experience. The plea, I called to my God but he was sleeping on that day, introduces a moment of spiritual desolation. The metaphorical slumber of God echoes feelings of abandonment and a yearning for divine intervention during times of hardship. This line encapsulates Sananda's sense of isolation and the absence of external sources of support. The poignant conclusion, I guess I'll just have to depend on me, oh, reflects a resigned acceptance of self-reliance. In the face of perceived abandonment and personal struggle, he acknowledges the need to draw strength from within. This declaration resonates with themes of resilience and the internal fortitude required to navigate life's adversities. In the second verse, Ricky delves into a reflective introspection, providing a poignant glimpse into the struggles and complexities that defined his life. The lines, reminiscing about the hard times I know I'm living on borrowed time immediately set a contemplative tone. He confronts the challenges of his past while acknowledging the precarious nature of his existence. The assertion, I'm the greatest of all time, but I'm tired and I want to put the ball down, Aish, introduces a paradoxical sentiment. While expressing a sense of self-pride and accomplishment, the weariness and desire to step away from the metaphorical game or responsibilities 
become palpable. This duality encapsulates the internal conflict experienced by him, a tension between personal achievements and the toll it takes on one's mental and emotional well-being. The maternal advice conveyed through, Mama told me look where you are now, if you leave it Ricky we all down, adds a layer of familial responsibility. Ricky grapples with the weight of his choices, recognizing that his decisions reverberate beyond the personal sphere, affecting those close to him. The use of Aish, a South African expression reflecting a mix of emotions, enhances the emotional impact of these revelations. The candid admission, that kind of pressure is a mama fudger, why did it have to be me? Lays bare the psychological strain born out of societal expectations and the burdens of fame. The juxtaposition of success and the internal struggles it brings to the forefront creates a poignant narrative. Ricky's vulnerability shines through as he questions the unfairness of shouldering such pressures. The subsequent lines, red eyes me can't see, late nights me can't sleep, these days me can't weep, provide a raw glimpse into the toll on his mental and emotional well-being. The physical manifestations of fatigue and emotional exhaustion underscore the depth of his internal battles. These poignant expressions gain an added layer of significance in retrospect, considering his untimely demise in 2022. The refrain of the third chorus paints a vivid picture of resilience, echoing the cyclical nature of life's challenges and the unwavering spirit to overcome them. The inclusion of the lines, the cool September blows the seeds away, introduces a metaphorical landscape where the winds of time carry away the remnants of struggle, making room for new growth and possibilities. As the narrative unfolds with the harvest blown again this year, there's a poignant acknowledgement of setbacks and challenges that persist. The recurring theme of a thwarted harvest speaks to the inevitable hardships faced, despite efforts and aspirations. It encapsulates the universal experience of facing setbacks, acknowledging that not every endeavor yields the expected results. The proclamation, but I'll return a stronger man, emerges as a beacon of hope amid adversity. It reflects a commitment to personal growth and resilience in the face of life's trials. The acknowledgement of returning stronger becomes a testament to the indomitable human spirit, resilient in its ability to face and overcome challenges. I'll return to me my homeland introduces a yearning for connection to one's roots and a sense of belonging. It embodies the desire to rediscover and reclaim the essence of self amidst the complexities of life's journey. The homeland becomes symbolic of a place of authenticity, identity, and grounding. The declaration, no grave shall hold my body down, adds a powerful spiritual dimension to the narrative. It echoes themes of transcendence, suggesting that even in the face of mortality, the spirit remains unconstrained. The refusal to be held by the grave serves as a metaphor for overcoming not only physical challenges, but also the intangible burdens that life may impose. As the chorus concludes with the affirmation, this land is still my, my home, it brings the thematic journey full circle. The repetition of my home reinforces the idea of a deep, enduring connection to one's roots and a sense of belonging. Despite the trials and tribulations, the land remains a constant, a grounding force that shapes the narrative of the song. The haunting repetition of the post-chorus becomes an even more poignant and chilling refrain when we revisit the context provided in the prelude. The words, I'll return a stronger man. This land is still my home, carry an eerie weight, as they transition from an artistic expression within the song to a chilling reality in Ricky's tweet. As we delve into the post-chorus, the repetition of these words lingers in the air, casting a somber shadow over the melodic landscape. The impact of this brief yet powerful utterance is heightened by the profound connection between the artist's work and his personal journey. The haunting premonition encapsulated in the lyrical verses gains a deeper resonance, serving as a stark reminder that the lines between an artist's creation and their lived experience can blur with profound consequences. The repetition of This land is still my home takes on a new layer of significance. It transforms from a thematic declaration within the song to a poignant expression that precedes the artist's tragic departure. The simplicity of these words becomes a powerful testimony to Ricky's connection to his homeland and the complex emotions that underscore the song. As listeners engage with the post-chorus, the haunting nature of these repeated lines invites reflection on the impact of an artist's words, both within the confines of a song and as a chilling premonition in the artist's life. 
The post-chorus becomes a poignant reminder of the profound and sometimes unsettling intersections between art and reality. As we conclude our exploration, the echoes of its haunting melody and introspective lyrics linger in the air, transcending the boundaries of mere musical notes. This composition, more than a song, stands as a testament to the intricate interplay between an artist's creation and their lived experiences. The profound journey we've undertaken through the verses, choruses, and post-choruses unveils not just the layers of the music, but the layers of Ricky's soul. The tragic turn of events in his life, particularly in the wake of the poignant premonitions encapsulated in the lyrics, adds a somber weight to the sonic landscape we've traversed. The haunting repetition of, this land is still my home, in the post-chorus, once a thematic declaration within the song, now takes on a chilling reality, echoing the sentiment Ricky expressed just before his untimely departure. The intersection of success and internal struggles, a theme intricately woven into the fabric of home, becomes even more poignant in retrospect. His vulnerability laid bare in verses that touch on pressure, fake love, and the complexities of fame, resonates with a profound authenticity. His journey from rapping for fun to navigating the fruitful yet brutal realities of success reflect a universal dichotomy faced by many in the creative industry. The incorporation of As Yet Untitled by Sananda Matreya into the narrative adds another layer of complexity, as the sample intertwines two artists' stories of struggle, resilience, and the quest for self-identity. The parallels between the two compositions invite reflection on the shared human experience of grappling with hardship and seeking resilience amidst life's challenges. In the end, home becomes more than a song. It becomes a vessel carrying the weight of an artist's emotions, struggles, and ultimately his legacy. His departure leaves behind a poignant reminder of the intricate relationship between art and reality, urging us to contemplate the impact of an artist's words and the enduring resonance of their creations. Shout out to the producers, namely Ricky, Mass Music, Howard, and DJ Maparisa. Let the haunting echoes of home also serve as a reminder that artists, regardless of their success or fame, are human beings navigating the complexities of life. Wealth and recognition don't shield them from the very real struggles that affect us all. Mental health is a universal concern, and no amount of money or acclaim can negate its existence. As we appreciate the artistry of those in the spotlight, let's also extend empathy, recognizing that the emotional landscapes of artists are as intricate and fragile as our own. In memory of Ricky, let us foster a culture of understanding and support, acknowledging that behind the curtain of stardom are individuals with dreams, fears, and vulnerabilities. May this exploration be a testament to the shared human experience, reminding us that compassion is an essential melody in the symphony of life. God bless you and have an impactful day as I sign out. Ladies and gentlemen, home by Mr. Boss Zonka, Ricky Rick, Mr. Ricardo Mercado, and as he would say, we never die, we multiply. <laughs>